Hello, I'm Philip Brunel, Artistic Director and Founder of Vocal Essence and Organist Choir Master at Plymouth Congregational Church in Minneapolis. Each day I have selected a composer who's had a role to play with both organizations. And ever since I began this series, it's been amazing to me to discover things about some of these composers. I knew their music, but I didn't know everything about them. And one of those is our composer today, the English composer Elizabeth Poston. Born in 1905, passed away in 1987. She was not only a composer, she was a pianist, she was a writer, she wrote songs, she wrote chamber music, and if you think back to the era that she was living, she wrote scores for radio and television. She worked with some amazing people to do those radio and television spots. She worked with C.S. Lewis, she worked with Dylan Thomas, and she edited three anthologies of folk songs, Christmas carols, and three of them were published by Penguin. Uh, one was a set of Christmas carols, another was a set of American folk songs, and then as I was trying to find more of her music, I have some of it, but certainly not all of it. I looked around and I thought, wait a minute, she was the person who edited the Cambridge hymnal. So, of course, then I got my Cambridge hymnal out. Here it is. And I thought, looked at the front, yes indeed, music editor, Elizabeth Poston. And She's most known, and I'm going to read a little bit about her, but she is most well known for uh, a, a sweet little song uh, that she set. The words were from a collection anonymous in 1784 coming out of New Hampshire. And this piece is done all over the world. Probably the most famous way you might know about it is from King's College, Cambridge, where it is often part of their Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols. It's called Jesus Christ, the Apple Tree. The words are so charming. Think back now, we're talking 1784, New, New Hampshire. The tree of life my soul hath seen, laden with fruit and always green, the trees of nature fruitless be compared with Christ, the apple tree. And then the last verse says, this fruit doth make my soul to thrive, it keeps my dying faith alive, which makes my soul in haste to be with Jesus Christ, the apple tree. So here's, here are two verses of this. First it begins unison and then it gets bigger, and then finally, the fourth verse is soprano, alto, tenor, bass. Music of Elizabeth Poston. So I looked in the introduction of this and she wrote here, a study of the history of hymnody reveals in fascinating variety a meeting point of human and divine with endless variations upon the eternal theme. 
in assembling under one cover songs of many types and origins for as many singers to choose from, we believe that such a variety is a start toward the wider fulfillment of the need felt for hymns by all sorts and conditions of people, songs as religious expression, not confined to doctrinal teaching, but in accordance with the freedom precious to many as the opportunity to express in their singing the aspirations and reflections of their faith. And then at the end she says, no music has been included by any contemporary composer not interested in writing a good and singable tune compatible with the words. In this era of the fragmentation of music, an exercise both testing and revealing. For him, melody that is to be a communication needs to be essentially shareable. Wonderful words. This was a, a hymnal that she was part of in the 1930s. So looking in that hymnal, I found so many that she had helped arrange. One of them is this uh, melody that comes from the Renaissance, and then she uh, imbued it with a lot of uh, passing notes. Here's what the melody is. And here's what she's done with it. She also took and did a canon. And I love the fact that the words for these Cambridge hymnal pieces come from so many sources. This one is a text of Edna St. Vincent Millay. And here's the text. The heart can push the sea and land farther away on either hand. The soul can split the sky in two and let the face of God shine through. What a unique, wonderful text for a hymn. And she made that one into a round. She also, of course, set a number of songs. And I looked in my library and found, of course, that there were this one that I had found. You know that I love when I'm in England or in France or in Germany to go to uh, music stores, particularly what we call antiquarian music stores, where they have a lot of old music that's there. And that's where I found this music of Elizabeth Poston. This one is called Sweet Suffolk Owl. It's a poem from 1647 by Thomas Vanter. Sweet Suffolk Owl, so trimly dight, with feathers like a lady bright, thou singest alone, sitting by night, to wit, to woo. Thy note that forth so freely rolls, with shrill command the mouse controls, and sings a dirge for dying souls, to wit, to woo. So you'll get a little feeling of that to wit in her setting of Sweet Suffolk Owl.
Have a wonderful day.